And I can quote you on that. Yeah. Yogi Berra. <laughs> you don't have to think about it, but you got to think about it. I got the best uh, overlap day. Woke up my normal 4 a.m. By 5.30, I was on with Entrepreneur. Six o'clock, had a business coaching session, the group session, had calls all the way to the gym. Got to the gym, worked out. Right when I finished, you know, I got on a coaching session while I got stretched. Then I had a quick, like seven minutes to shower, get dressed, get into ART. Uh, therapy and had another phone call with SB Nation uh, to put the blender on the weekends. Got a killer deal, then worked all the way to the office. I think I was doing something almost 100% of the day where I finished my last coaching call, driving to the airport right now, and I'm gonna do more phone calls on the way to the airport, fly to Pebble Beach, land, I have calls with uh, the Unstoppable Foundation for my 50 for 50 campaign, go, I have uh, meet CJ Anderson from the Broncos, do a podcast, go to an event, and then have a dinner meeting after that. <laughs> well, people, other people are getting in the car, drive out to Pebble Beach so we could be there in the morning to be on the James Brown show uh, with a variety of other meetings, of course, at Pebble Beach. And then we're gonna fly back to get home in time to see my family. It's gonna be a good 24 hours. I am pleased to be here in Pebble Beach, California, home of the Pro-Am Golf Tournament. And folks, today I'll be talking to someone who deserves to spend endless time playing golf after 14 grueling years in the league from 1976 to 1989. This New England Patriot and LA Raider established himself as the greatest corner in league history. That is a mouthful to say the least. And he'll be joined today by a guy who is a Hall of Famer in the game of life, his good friend and partner in numerous projects and charitable causes, I welcome Hall of Famer Mike Haynes and Dave Meltzer, the CEO of Sports One Marketing. We're back here talking with uh, Mike Haynes and Dave Meltzer, and you guys were giving us what, again, let me just play cynic here, seems to be square kinds of priorities in the game of life. Hall of Famer, football. Hall of Famer in terms of your business success now. What are you guys doing now, and is it truly resonating with young people? Well, when I, when I get a chance to talk now, not only to young people, but you know, older people too, I get a, a, you know, a lot of opportunities to speak. Um, I try to tell them how much I've learned from sports and how it's all about the team. And I say, whenever I have problems, I try to look at it, how do I look at this as a team? I actually look at our country as one big team. You know, I look at it that way. I look at my, my community as one big team. The mayor, he's a member of my team. The president, everybody as a member of my team. Now, sometimes you have a team that's, you know, not functional, you know, uh, and other times you have a team that wants to be great. You have all these different types of teams. And for me, this is kind of, uh, it should have been a, a, a new way of thinking. He wasn't representing me when you know, I had a, a different Wish. representative. Um, <laughs> and I probably would have been doing a lot of those things. So I'm doing a lot, still doing a lot of good stuff. Uh, but uh, when it comes to, um, you know, having financial goals and things like that, consistent with other goals that I have, I hadn't thought it out, and I'm really glad that there are people out there like Dave helping people to make those kinds of choices and decisions. Not lost on me that you said that the message is not just for young people, but for seasoned people yes. as well. And clearly Dave can speak to this as you're talking to a seasoned audience of, as Mike was just saying, people we would look at and say, my gosh, what do they need in the way of encouragement and reinforcement? You're finding that it's resonating with seasoned professionals who we would deem very successful? I was worried. I said, well, you know, is my message going to resonate with these young kids on Instagram and old people on LinkedIn? And what I found was I went back to what my mom, who's a mother of six, single mom, teacher, you know, and I learned, she said, you got to study history and philosophy. I said, mom, that's old stuff. Right, I want, I want to learn about calculus and computing. And she said, no, because you have to learn this because human nature never changes. And that, to me, was so powerful as a young man with my mom, who I human respected. Human nature never changes. And so study the human nature. And so human nature resonates with everyone. And what I find even more powerful is I made a ton of money. And I went bankrupt. 
in, in my 30s. I retired and went bankrupt in my 30s. I lost more money than I ever dreamed of having. And I learned a valuable lesson to be of service. I, I truly trusted the universe at that time. My wife, you know, who stayed with me, she said, you know, yeah, very. <laughs> yes. and, and said, As we know in the world of sports too, right? <laughs> yeah, very. And she said, uh, you're not worried about making back that money? I said, oh, no, I've always made money. I was a millionaire nine months out of law school. Making money wasn't my problem. I wanted to learn the value of money. I wanted to learn how to keep my money. So I went back and didn't study anything new about making it. I studied the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts. I studied history and understood the energy of money. And I realized that I shifted the paradigm of value that I wake up every morning, I pray to God that I can have 10 people in front of me that I can help. Every minute of the day, I try to just provide value, which creates a void for the universe to fill instead of me. And the universe is efficient, effective, and statistically successful. And it changed my life, not only because I was working for the whole, I was working for oneness, and it motivated me more. And I make a lot of money, I help a lot of people, and I have a lot of fun. That's the simple philosophy that resonates with a five-year-old and a 105-year-old. <laughs> Wasn't that worth it? That was so oh, no, totally. Fun. I just want to understand. Yeah, yeah, you just put yeah, it on here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You two are all serious. You two. So I have your permission. Right? Yes. Absolutely. Um, the other thing, JD, we, yes, we have this. I have this philosophy on pressure. Mm -hmm. On pressure. <laughs> Thank you. I, oh. My philosophy: everybody fails when they feel pressure. Did Nick Foles act like he was feeling any pressure? At Did all. Did Pedersen act like he was feeling any pressure? Wow. And was that story you told about the, the coach Peterson? Is that true? Yeah. He was a high school coach nine years ago. No, no, no. But he didn't tell you that he was going to be a Super Bowl. No, no, no. Oh, no. But other coaches asked, right? And so, but I, I thought to myself, I was walking away, I would have said, this guy's right. dreaming. Right. And, and I'm a dreamer myself. Yeah. And I, so it really taught me a lesson. Like, I can't keep limiting when other people tell me stuff. I got to do something really special today at Pebble Beach that was be on the James Brown show with one of my mentors, Mike Haynes. And it's fun about Mike Haynes is, you know, when I first met him, he was the antithesis of what I thought I was going to meet because I thought of him as the toughest player in the NFL and he is a gentle, generous person. And so you can't read a book by its cover, especially if you played for the Raiders. Uh, so you got to give those guys a second chance. James Brown is as inspirational as ever. The TV show was amazing. We got many other opportunities because of it. So if you do the right things, things happen for you. And another touch of favor in my life, being with uh, Mike Haynes and James Brown. And I think we have a new message that we can share with people in unifying everyone. And I'm just uh, so excited to be here. And I'm blessed. I mean, what can I tell you? This is amazing. Lousy shot into the green. <laughs> That's a small green. Yeah. And that tree, it depends on, you know, like you don't really yeah. think about it, but you have to think about it. <laughs> I can quote you on that. Yeah. Yogi Berra. You don't have to think about it, but you got to think about it. Right there, Mike Haynes, he's, Yogi, he's a new Yogi Berra of football. Greatest retirement job. I'm 75. Oh, Jim, what a good thing to meet you. Work about I like to argue, that's Jim Kim Fitz. Once again, utilizing the 520 rule, it would have taken us forever to fly back to, to drive back to San Jose and fly home. So, our dear friends flying us back, we'll be home at a normal time, back in the office, end the day, and then driving home to be with my family. Just an extraordinary day. We just touched with favor again, and uh, we did a lot. You know, made a lot of money, helped a lot of people, have a lot of fun, and made great relationships. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to working uh, with the guys at Pebble Beach on the U.S. Open, helping with sponsorship for charity, and uh, just getting started. I'll do some wean walking. Dave Meltzer, the wean walker, matches my shoes. <laughs> 